Hi there and welcome again to this edition of Caritel Blockchain Talk. We are based in Barbados. I'm your host, Hallam Hope. And it's been a month now since we've had a conversation. The last time we spoke, actually, we looked at the whole question of the blockchain, what it was. And we talked about the miners and how they create nodes and how those nodes uh, come together into blocks and how each block is connected up um, and how each block forms a chain and we have the blockchain and in this blockchain each block has a replica a copy of all the transactions it might be cryptocurrency transactions like bitcoin it could be data or information transactions but each one has a copy and therefore the blockchain is secure it has been secure ever since 2009 uh, and that's 10 years of a good record uh, for a better record i would think for some of our friends at the commercial banks who've had uh, their customers accounts hacked. Uh, far better, I think, than some government uh, websites and, and institutions where they've had their facilities hacked as well, even as recent as you know several months ago here in Barbados when the some hacker actually broke into the Supreme Court registry and the private information of you, myself, our friends and family were compromised and of course taxpayers has to foot the bill. It's something that governments really don't like and they would probably want to avoid, I'm pretty sure. But the governments also have some challenges, some projects that they've been talking about now for about 15 years. So for example, if you've ever been in the waiting room um, at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, you know, you sat down for an hour or whatever and you waited for someone, a nurse, to bring your record so that the doctor that you're seeing can see your record. And then the nurse comes after quite some time and says, oh, we can't find your record. It's missing. It's somewhere here, we believe, but we can't find your record. And how indeed can a doctor really help you and treat you really very efficiently when he doesn't have a copy of your record? So the core question of records and record keeping has been a, for quite some time a major problem here in Barbados and many of our Caribbean countries because we're all into files and folders and dust and, and ill and health and uh, you know not finding documents and that sort of thing now another challenge of course is the issue at the supreme court where you know uh, the hackers were able to break into your private information right another issue could be for example the police police certificate of character where people might need to get a job in the next week or a couple of weeks or so so they apply for a police certificate of character then they've told, oh, well, it's going to take you a month or whatever. And you, then, you, you know, you're wondering, well, how can I get this thing in, in, <laughs> in a month? And, uh, you know, job opportunities just around the corner. So there are all these built-in inefficiencies in government. And it's not necessarily the government's fault. Um, but it's simply that the issue is that technology is a challenge. Um, security is a problem. Um, you know, digitizing documents has a cost, the big cost of digitizing documents. And if you digitize documents and you put them on the same old crappy um, website or whatever that can be hacked into, then what's the point, really? So, along comes blockchain. And that's what I've been doing over the last month or so. I've been, you know, talking to some folk and find out really what is really possible. Because in today's world, we're not really interested in theory. We're not interested in reading lots of possibilities. We're not interested in challenges and doubts and problems and, and what could be done, but we're not sure how it could be done. Um, and yes... I am happy to say that I am very convinced that as of today and for a little while now, we do have the solution in the Caribbean to solve all these problems using the blockchain. I was really invigorated and heartened by a presentation by the Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies uh, some weeks ago. We talked to matriculating students, the students, the freshers and the weeds that are just coming. Um, and he's encouraging them to, you know, <clears throat> to treat the, the, the university as their institution, to value it and, and that sort of thing. And he went on to talk about two sets of people. He talked about the doubters, and he talked about the the um, those the doers. And he said, you know, it's sad that there are so few doers and so many doubters. And, and that's the issue that we have with blockchain and cryptocurrency here in the Caribbean. There are so many doubters, and there are so few doers. And there's so much convincing that needs to be done, but yet the solutions are there. The solutions are there to use the blockchain I'm convinced of, of seeing the technology, I, I know the pilot projects that are available to solve some of those critical problems like a digital ID that's so very, very important. You know, like the issue with the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and records, it's been there for 20 years or whatever. 
issues like the Supreme Court where our records need to be available and we need to make sure they're not hacked into and, and other areas as I mentioned the police certificate of character and these are just a few because in Jamaica we know that the blockchain is being used in some regards in part with farmers, rural farmers who need to get help financially but they don't have the, their, their information, they don't have their documentation organized properly. So it's possible, it can be done, we can do it but we need to have a high degree of faith we need to educate ourselves and we need to get to the people of influence to say it can be done. We do have a solution. That solution is uh, blockchain.